I uh, I did take a picture at one of the bike shows in Sturgis. There was a a trike, a chopper trike with a 454 on it, a blown 454 on it, and I was like, man, that that's Denny's ride for season two. I like to see Denny on a trike. That'd be fun. Is that one of those three wheel car things? Tattoos and motorcycles go hand in hand. Since the time I was a little kid, I've wanted to be in the tattoo industry. I love sitting watching other tattoo artists work, and I don't get to do it very much. I think a motorcycle is the best sense of freedom you can ever have. There's just something about it. I love the way it looks. love the freedom of it. I'm a wild hog kind of rider. I'm not a lifer like these guys. It hurts my ass. 21 days of just riding my motorcycle, it's phenomenal. No scripts, no bullshit. I'll take the whole damn fender off, and I'll ride without a fender. Just real artists, raw stories, and the miles in between. Am I ready? I've waited for this all my life. This is Tattoos and Turnpikes. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching Tattoos and Turnpikes. I am director Patrick Lawrence, and today we're here with the entire crew talking about the series and answering some of your guys' biggest questions that you've been leaving us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get down and uh, give you guys some answers today. So I'm going to go around the room and introduce. We got Robbie Callery. What up? And then we got Red Dog and Big Dave. What's up? And then we got Denny hanging out. Okay, so Wesley Fields asked, I love the fact that you went to Bill Dodge's shop. He's a good friend and he built me a bike that he started in Kentucky where I'm from and finished it in Daytona. I was wondering if Dave followed through with getting a bling cycle, and if so, which one? Yeah, it's actually on that episode. When you walk in, there's a, a road king sitting there, and Bill Dodge um, is not known for building baggers. He's known for building choppers. So when I seen that bike in there, it definitely had his styling to it. Um, it's in his shop, and and I was I fell in love with it. And off camera, I was talking to him about it, and he built that bike for um, Jim Root from Slipknot, the guitar player from Slipknot. And uh, a couple years later, um, I got asked um, to help fulfill a girl named Emily Lineman's um, bucket list. She was dying of cancer and um, she had terminal cancer. And um, I was fortunate enough to be asked to be a part of um, that and one of the things that she wanted to do was to go to a Slipknot concert and um, so I reached out to Bill knowing that he had built Jim Root a motorcycle and um, then Jim Root and I connected and we made that happen for her and she was able to go on a stage and throw drumsticks they treated her like a queen and um, it was a tremendous experience and when I was backstage we all went riding that day on motorcycles. And um, that was another thing on our bucket list was to to uh, ride a Harley. So we all went riding, her and her mom, Kim, and um, some of us and John Campbell from uh, Lamb of God, he went riding with us and we just spent the day riding motorcycles and ended up at the Slipknot concert. And that night we were backstage and I told Jim, I said, man, I love that Road King. If you ever, uh, if you ever want to sell it, I want first dibs on it. And uh, he told me he was selling it and um, that uh, to talk to Bill and the three of us brokered a deal. And now I own that motorcycle. All right. Uh, our next question comes from Quiet Man Rides. And he asked, who paid for all of the tattoos? Dave, you could probably explain what, what the agreement was for being a part of the show. So, yeah, I just reached out to the tattoo artists and, and told them um, the point to the show is we wanted to get a three-hour tattoo and to show people kind of what you can get done in three hours. Um, a few of those tattoos went longer than three hours, and we specifically talked about that on the show. Because of the controversy on the TV shows, you know, like people come in and um, I know there's a show where they'll get this big piece. They'll come in and they want this big piece. And they're like, oh, let me step in the back, draw something up. And they come out. And then in one episode, they've got this piece done. It looks like they just sat down and got that whole tattoo in one session. And so that was 
the premise behind it is we want to show and us in the industry know good and well that although that client may be wearing the same clothes that that tattoo was not done in the same session i talked to the tattoo artists and asked them if they if they would be willing to um donate the tattoos so uh and then we would be on the show and and so every tattoo that was done on the show uh the artist uh did not charge us at all so um they did that on their own time and uh, at their expense so we're extremely grateful for that troy roberts asked will all those soft tails and dinas become touring bikes for season two <laughs> that's God willing. <laughs> I'm really I am I'm seriously considering taking two motorcycles for season two and starting the journey on a chopper and uh seeing if I can finish it on a chopper. However, I'm gonna take a backup just in case. Right now I got a road king that that I'm going to take. However, my plan is to start season two on some sort of chopper. That's like saying my thoughts are I'm going to get every tattoo on my ribs and inner thigh just, However, to, just to do it, just you to know, do it. just to see if I can muscle through it. I, I, bought, a, I bought an 08 Heritage. Um, that's what I'd be on. You heard it here. He's going to be on a motorcycle right there. I am going to, to answer that question, I'm going to do my best to find Denny a road king with a windshield even if he doesn't like it i know he's got his heritage however i will do my best to find him a road king with a windshield or a road glide or a street glide um does he have the windshield on the heritage do you have a windshield on your no i got I, what 18 or 20 inch apes on it oh god he's not taking that oh, uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> you're so cute <laughs> Dave, speaking of windshields, we, we couldn't find the footage, but explain why Denny doesn't wear a mask while welding. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about... I, <laughs> he's got mad skill blinking. Mad skill blinker. I, I, I would... I'll let Denny elaborate, and then, and then I'll clarify any gaps in his story. It's a little misconstrued. Okay. I do wear a helmet when I'm welding. I, I said that I can weld without a helmet, and I do it quite often. So when, I, when if I'm doing something small or, or I'm in a, sp a space where a helmet's some monstrosity on your head, I've found, I've found ways, whether it's to find where I'm welding and close my eyes or look away from it, or to keep the handle and, and kind of in front of the glare of the weld. Um, anybody that welds a lot does it all the time. I, I, I'm nothing special. Oh, you're special. Oh, so you're how special. does that reference riding in the rain? Because you made a reference to that I, riding. I'm not sure. I don't recall that. Was I drinking? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> you, you, I, I can make I can make up some uh I can make up some shit when I'm drinking. <laughs> you you said you blink fast. You can you stop the raindrops <laughs> if you blink fast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a fast blinker. As we get on the road, it starts to sprinkle. Well, as the rain picks up, Denny starts falling back. I look over and Denny doesn't have glasses on. I've been through this with Denny before where he rides without glasses and rides like this. And he's like, I'm cool, I'm cool. You catch one rock or bug in the eye and you're done. I had lost a pair of glasses, so I bought a pair of gas station glasses. For whatever reason, it tunneled the wind right underneath the glasses. My eyes were so wind burnt. And everybody, you know, wear your glasses, wear your glasses. Fuck you. We can only slow down so much, and Denny's backing up. Well, Red Dog, I notice, is backing up. I have to split the difference where I'm keeping an eye on Dave, and I'm keeping an eye on Denny. Finally, I lose Denny. I look forward to Dave. I've lost Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to pull over to my glasses and get uh, me lost. Like, I do I do like this in my eyelashes, <laughs> and then I, and when big ones are coming, I just blink fast. And I'm like, when the big ones are coming. <laughs> Something I don't. I won't deny it. Uh, <laughs> Denny Wayne Davis asks, "Will Denny get the tattoo he missed out on from Trader Bob's when his house flooded? Did you have a tattoo in mind that you were going to get at Trader Bob's?" No, I, I didn't. Um, it, I, I I still that that's the 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 worst part of the show. Uh, 
You know, I, I wish I wouldn't have had to leave. Uh, I would have liked to have been the one to get the tattoo down there. Um, it would have been funny because there would have been uh, you know, some extra stories pertaining to Omar. You know, when Dave asked him, or, or there, we, we had a mutual friend with Omar that, that hooked him and Dave up to come into our shop. And like I said, when I first opened the shop, Dave come and said, I got this artist coming from St. Louis, and I'm going to sit and watch him. And I said, well, what cut are we getting? And Dave said, oh, I'm going to let him keep all of his money from his tattoos. And I think I about passed out. After sitting there and, and watching him for the weekend and stuff, I completely understood why Dave did that. Um, and, and, you know, shame on me for even thinking like that. But it would have been funny to kind of maybe even touch base on that with him because he probably didn't know that for the first three hours he was in the shop, I was freaking out because all the tattoos were going to him and we wasn't getting no money off of it. <laughs> I'm looking at Omar like it, it, this is a blessing in disguise. Like, Oh, it was. It was. Because sure. no, nobody back then, like I was self-taught with everything. And um, once I became a tattoo artist, once I started tattooing, then nobody would share any information with me at all. Like everything was this secret, like tune your liner and how to, how to tune your liner different than your shade or how to dilute your black and grays and just different things. Like, and so everything... Uh, I knew was was self-taught and to have uh, an artist like Omar that was reputable and talented um, be willing to come in to our shop and I was just I was lining him up with tattoos I don't think I tattooed at all that week because I just wanted to sit and watch him tattoo and ask questions and he did he answered every question I had and prior to that I was using all round shaders for anybody in the tattoo industry I was using all round shaders I'd never even used a mag um i'd used some flats back then they had flat needles however i wasn't comfortable uh using them and there was it wasn't like there was a bunch of youtube tutorials or anything like that so omar taught me a ton I, he, he walked out of that shop and uh i had several years worth of information coming from his experience that that, that i got to walk away with yeah and i mean it, it might be one of the reasons we were able to be successful it was a lot of knowledge like i said i didn't see it at first good thing dave did and dave did it anyway you know like i said what we said earlier you know the appreciation for tattoos now is so much different than what it was you know 13 years ago when we opened the first shop next question paul simonelli asked what's your guys favorite bike week you just got back from sturgis but is is there a favorite for you guys the the ones of you that travel prior to this week i would have told you that um Oktoberfest in Daytona, which is like the October bike week, uh, would have been my favorite. And I still really enjoy that. However, we just got back from Sturgis and um, I had a blast, man. It was, uh, there's still a hundred things that I didn't get to do while I was up there. And I had never been to Sturgis and I will openly speak that it was, uh, complete ego and judgment on my part as to why I didn't go to Sturgis. Like I've sat for years and rode hardtail choppers and, and struggled to, uh, I was like the working class biker, you know, and um, the people that I knew that went to Sturgis that I personally knew that went to Sturgis were all corporate America guys that, that, had businesses that could shut down their business and spend thousands of dollars and go up there and pretend to be bikers for a week. And like I said, that's completely my judgment. And so this year, uh, because of tattoos and turnpikes, um, we had some opportunities up there in Sturgis that I, I wasn't willing to pass up. And so we went and um, what I experienced up in Sturgis is something that uh, I wish the world had more of right now. You know? Everybody was welcoming, kind, and friendly, and genuine, genuine, and happy to see you, and <laughs> helpful, and it was just uh, a tremendous experience, man. I wish we could have had a film crew up there the whole weekend. Sturgeon is my favorite, um, just due to the riding. Um, you go, nothing against Florida and Daytona, however, whenever you you ride through Daytona and then you ride through the Black Hills 
of the Coda, it's it's night and day. It really is. And the writing of it, Sturgis, um, it's just phenomenal. It's breathtaking and it's priceless. So Sturgis is my pick. Yeah, I would I would say Sturgis as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm with Dave in the fact that, you know, uh, my judgment of what Sturgis was and what it was about kept me out of Sturgis for so long. And Spacey's actually been attempting to get me up to Sturgis probably the past four years. And, um, you know, it always come down to it. I'm like, nah, man, I ain't going, I ain't doing it. And, uh, you know, I got an opportunity this year to not only go to Sturgis, but to uh, – be in a circle of people um that it was absolutely amazing you know um I didn't get to do a whole lot of riding because I was tattooing up there at Spacey shop however I did go on a couple of rides and got to experience Main Street and Sturgis and it was uh it was definitely unlike anything that I that I thought it was going to be I mean, it, it really was amazing, and I do plan to go back again. All right. Uh, Jason Faviano said, were there any other tattoo shops or destinations on your road trip that you would have liked to have stopped at but were unable to for one reason or another? Oh, there's, there's so many. I mean, when me and Dave sat down and started planning everything, I would say we had 50-plus tattoo shops and, and motorcycle shops that we wanted to go to. I mean, we could have stretched, we could have stretched that ride out for six months, just going to, um, just going to various shops, you know, uh, and that's just tattoo shops. Then you start bringing bike builders into it, you know, um, there's so many little, you know, what, what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of these big name motorcycle builders that are out there, they're not in these monster, uh, multi-million dollar shops. A lot of these guys are working out of a, you know, pole barn or garage out behind their house, cranking out these bikes. So we had, um, we'd wrote down, me and Robbie had wrote down a bunch of different shops that we wanted, different bike builders that we wanted. And, um, the more we worked on getting them involved, uh, the more adamant I became about doing this because what we were experiencing was people did not want to be filmed and did not want to be a part of a TV show because what their experience of TV shows were. So we would get um, the pol- some some we would get the polite no thanks not interested um, appreciate the offer that was the polite we got and then the impolite was fuck no and fuck your show and uh, because. Uh, the television industry and the motorcycle, you know, what, what was represented on television for the tattoo and motorcycle industry. It's been my experience that a lot of tattoo artists and a lot of uh, bike builders don't appreciate. So, um, so there were several places that we wanted to um, go to that. um, And that I think now, uh, or what I've experienced already so far since this show is, um, especially just coming back from Sturgis is, uh, um, the credibility to the show and the authenticity of the show has, uh, has made it where it's opened up all kinds of doors for season two. So we had a couple questions from overseas, uh, Scotland, South Africa, Australia, uh, this this one comes from the UK from Daniel Gareth George Povey. Uh, Red me if I said that wrong. You know, uh, would you guys ever consider coming over to the United Kingdom and visiting some shops over here and finding out some of the history about how it came to our shores? It, it's all about budget and finances and um, how far the dollar can go. Um, but I think that'd be very cool to ride overseas. I think that'd be an excellent excellent uh season so dave if you could get on that (laughs) that great yes so so um, we need we need a sponsorship from harley davidson we need a sponsorship from united airlines um you know we're gonna need some of those big sponsorships maybe a mcdonald's sponsorship who knows is there a place that is there or a country that you guys would love to do a season of the show in Man, I'm uh 
so first off, uh, UK has responded tremendously to this and I would absolutely love going over there just because the response and the comments we get from that in Australia and, uh, and I'm just a fan of Ireland. So I would love to, there's so much in the United States though. We haven't even scratched the surface in the United States. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, like, I really can see this going on and on and on. And, um, so I'm excited to see how tattoos and tur turnpikes develops and where it goes. And um, I would definitely like to be over there in UK, Australia, and Ireland. Denny, is there a country that you would like to ride a motorcycle in? There's a few I don't want to, so <laughs> we won't mention those. One being the United States. Denny doesn't want to ride a motorcycle in the United States. I'd love to see you in the Outback. That's... <laughs> Actually, for some reason, ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to see Ireland, and I don't know why. I just think the pictures that I see and shit look really cool. For me, riding a motorcycle down the road, it really don't matter what country I am, and I'm probably still going to be bent after about the first 100 miles. A couple people asked, uh, would you have a fan along for a ride in an episode? I actually just, uh, I just went to Dave with an idea of having... Uh, you know, on season two, having uh, meet and greet stops along the way um, or possibly doing like, um, you know, a couple various points along whatever route we wind up going, having like, uh, you know, just a couple hour motorcycle ride, check out the local scene, you know, and um, something like that. So I would say that's, I don't, I don't know that we would want to take a fan for the entire trip because it's pretty grueling and already having five different personalities plus the film crew it gets pretty tense so um but definitely going on some sort of ride with some fans that would be super cool even up in Sturgis I had people that uh, um would stop me quite a, often and recognize me from the show and want to talk and I would sit there and talk and and uh, I said I would be the worst celebrity ever to where seeing me and talking to me is not going to be a big deal because <laughs> I'll talk to anybody I'm I'm really not a fan of riding with a whole bunch of people. so um I uh the the bigger the ride the more uncomfortable I get and um I I, I I'm the guy that can ride cross country by myself and be perfectly happy uh riding with a couple people is about the most that i like so riding with five people one of them being denny um <laughs> is, uh, no denny's a good rider um i just i'm one of the people that i don't like somebody else dictating my my pace and, and i tell everybody else that too don't let me dictate your pace so when you get multiple people riding like i like to ride fast uh, I like to ride faster than traffic. That way I'm focused on what's in front of me and don't have to worry about what's coming up behind me or beside me. Then when I'm riding with somebody that's not comfortable doing that, then I'm down and it creates a dis for me. So like, it's nothing against Denny. He's comfortable doing 70. When I'm doing 70. Then I'm uncomfortable because now I'm worried about the cars coming up behind me and beside me. And so adding other riders along the way. Um, you don't even know who they are who I don't know, or their writing capabilities, or uh, probably not. We've already had several people say that they're following us. They're going with us whether we want them to or not. So when we do leave out for season two, it's going to have to be like a top secret. Like, you know, before it was like countdown three months ahead. We're getting ready to leave. We're leaving. You know, chances are like, when we leave out for season two, it's going to have to be hush, hush, or we are going to have 50 bikes lined up loaded down ready to go with us you you probably get some people join in along the way anyway i think i think we might have had a few people i mean we we rode up on some bikes before they didn't know what we were doing at the time it's nothing against anybody else it's just uh it's a safety measure yeah i i have i have five children and, and a wife and a career and and i enjoy riding uh and I like to know who I'm riding with and, and their capabilities so that I feel safe. You know, there was, there was several cities that we were in where it was difficult for just the four or sometimes five of us to uh, not get separated, not get into sketchy situations, you know, uh, rush hour traffic in Atlanta, 
um, rush hour traffic in Miami. There was a point where Spacey was airborne because we hit this huge six inch drop in the highway. So, you know, there's stuff like that that you're going to encounter on a ride cross country where, you know, the more bikes you put in that pack, the harder it is to, to keep it together. You know, we're actually going to be putting together a three day motorcycle event, um, in 2021 that, that there's going to be a couple big organized rides. Chances are one of them will be a tattoos and turnpikes, uh, tattoos and turnpikes rides. So, uh, Stacy Henneke asked, does anybody wish they had gotten a different tattoo on the show? So not, not the tattoo itself, but the subject matter, uh, would you have gotten something different? Uh, for me? No, I, like I said, I, I had had plans on getting the Texas tattoo on my leg. Um, I wish that could have happened, but other than that, no, I, I, I wouldn't have got anything different. That's a, that's a no for me as well. I, I, the four tattoos that I got, they're all uh, amazing tattoos and an amazing experience with each one of them. So there's no way I would trade one. Yeah, my answer is absolutely not. I, I love all three tattoos and the experience with each artist was phenomenal. So I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, at the point we picked the artist and I mean, we knew who we were going to. We knew what we were going to get. We had, we had researched uh you know some of the artists we knew some of the artists we didn't know prior how we'd done the research and the one i got on my leg i didn't know what i was going to get however i knew his work and i knew his art and i was a fan and it was about wearing a piece of art and having that experience so no i wouldn't change anything denny kind of talked a little bit about this uh on the show uh, but Carlos Jimenez asked, what are your personal favorite styles of tattoos? So Denny really likes prison style tattoos. Do you still like prison style tattoos after all of this? Well, let, let's, uh, let's clarify it. Oh God. Wait, did you say clarify? <laughs> yeah. Clarify. Patrick, hold on a second. God, Patrick, if you catch a Dennyism, you cannot call him on it. He's not, he's not dumb. Then he's not dumb. So he picks up on the fact that you call him on it. If you ever enjoy, if you enjoy them, you cannot call him on them. Otherwise he will not say them again. Clarify. <laughs> we have a book up at the tattoo shop of Dennyisms, And when we catch him saying them, we write him down. So we get to enjoy them later. Cause if you, if he knows, if you acknowledge it, like you just did, then he picks up that he may have, and, and he cracks himself and then we don't get to enjoy it anymore. So shame on you, Patrick. <laughs> All right. So the question was, what are your favorite tattoo styles? All right. So I like the whole prison style with the morph and the cancer and everything. I just like the style. It's like, like, I think we've talked about this before. There's a lot of pepper shade and single needle use. I'm not saying that if it, if it's done in a more professional way, I just like the style that, that then some of the artwork that, that comes with prison style artwork, um, for whatever reason. So a lot of black, a lot of black and gray, a lot of skulls mor mor morphing into faces and stuff with, you know, cancer or what you guys call cheese or whatever, just stuff along those lines. Um, you know, then, he, then he likes when you look at a tattoo for you not to even know what it is, that you have to sit there and stare at the tattoo. And as you look at it, more and different things appear that are hidden. And it's just this really busy, all blended together, not several distinct pieces. It's not like this piece that's stamped on your body and then there's another piece and it has filler. Then he likes everything to be blended and, uh, that's really typical in, in prison style tattooing. I like uh, neo-traditional. I respect, there's so many hyper-realistic artists out there that are, um, that I follow and that I look at that I'm just astounded by what people are capable of doing today in the skin. It's just unbelievable. Um, however, my particular favorite is like neo-traditional. I can respect any art form and, uh, 
you know, with the talent that pe that that a lot of artists have nowadays, realism is really cool to see what some of these guys can put on skin and make look so realistic. So I'm fascinated by that. And just whenever people ask me my style, like what would I like on me? Really just anything color, man. Like I got pale skin, so I take color really well. <clears throat> and I'm really just a fan of of just good quality tattoos you know whether it be traditional neo-traditional man just bold lines and bright colors like just your traditional tattoo style you know um i enjoy getting it i enjoy tattooing it i think that it you know that kind of stuff really holds the test of time which is really cool you know i love seeing a tattoo that's 15 years old and still looks uh, you know still looks good i'm not going to say it looks just as good as the day you got it because that's impossible however uh just you know, just that traditional style of tattooing, bold lines, high contrast, bright colors. Like that's, you know, that's what I like. Um, I don't really have a style. I don't really care for it. Um, I just like good, clean work. Um, I can take two different styles and they both can come out and look excellent. So nothing for me. At Tectonic Visuals asked if you could go back to one spot on the trip and revisit, which one would it be? It'd be Pensacola. Um, next door to Gabe's was a comic book store, and there are like three action figures that I couldn't afford, and I needed to get them. So that's where I would go. And I can't believe I picked Florida. You got the Predator Dutch, right? Dutch, that is correct. I got the action figure Dutch. Um, there was a John Rambo from First Blood that I did not buy, and to this day, I still kick myself. That was a phenomenal action figure, and I should have got it. So I feel stupid. As you should. <laughs> For me, uh, I've been back several times since the show, and I'll keep going because it's, it, it's one of my favorite places to visit is New Orleans there for the first time on the show and i've been back multiple times since and uh i'm gonna go back every chance i get i'll be back in daytona i'm actually flying to daytona uh mid-october to just make some appearances at willie's tropical chopper show uh for biketoberfest so anybody that's watching this um look for me in daytona uh i think it's like the 16th 17th and 18th that we'll be there um and we're we're probably gonna go by Bill Dodge's place. We're gonna definitely go to Willie's and I'll probably have some tattoos and turnpike swag, some t-shirts and stickers and that kind of stuff. So anybody that's watching this between now and then, um, look for me down in Daytona. I, I went back to Oklahoma um for the you know, to finish the let let the same guy finish my arm. I'd probably go back to Paducah, Kentucky and and uh or actually where was we? Somewhere in Illinois. Um Wherever my truck, or my bike went in the back of the truck, I'd like to go back there and finish the rest of the ride. That that would be nice. I don't know. I mean, I I've, I've been back to Tennessee a bunch. That's a quick little hop up the road for us, and beautiful place to ride. Um, I've been to Florida multiple times. Again, um, shittiest part about filming this whole trip was that that we were working on. Um, our our budget, you know, that we this and we didn't have any big sponsors, we didn't have anything, so everything was a time crunch and it was a race to get footage and to get on to the next shop. You know, there was multiple times we rode in the rain just to get to the next shop um, because these tattoo artists closed down their shop so that we could have a film crew there or they accommodated a film crew, even if they didn't shut down the shop, they gave us a spot and they took them out of their lives and, and um, to make that happen. So we wanted to make sure to get there and, and live up to those obligations. And um, when we planned it, we didn't realize like how actually time consuming it was gonna be, you know, a three hour tattoo in a shop takes five hours uh, minimum, you know, to get, set up to talk to clean up you know for anybody that's ridden cross country <clears throat> in a group if you're if you're making time it's safe to assume that like every 100 miles you're going to spend two hours on the road so if it's a 500 mile trip you can count on it being 10 hours our days were just 
build. And so at every location, I would love to go back and spend more time. Um, and we were exhausted on the trip. So there was uh, questions um, that I missed or that I wish I could go back and ask or talk or elaborate on. Um, there was different sites we could see at every single location that it was like, I wish we could have spent more time there or we could have went there on that. So um, I would love to redo the whole thing and spend more time at each location. So season two, we'll definitely take that in consideration and give ourselves more time uh, for filming purposes. I'd like to touch on that real quick. I remember whenever I got back and I would have family members that would talk about, oh man, that must've been awesome to see so many places and see so many different, go here and go there. And my only response to that was, you would wake up from a hotel, you'd get on your bike, ride anywhere from eight to 10 hours, nonstop, go sit in a tattoo parlor, get a tattoo, and then hit that hotel and then do it all over again the next day. Like, it was like, a, it was almost like a broken record. That is what you did every day. So you really didn't get to see anything. You know, we traveled the lower part of the United States and we saw this, we saw that. Man, we just, you saw tattoo parlors, you saw hotels, and you saw asphalt, you know? Um, will we do it again? Absolutely. However, it's not like we were on this carefree, just, you know, we had a schedule. And like Dave said, we had to honor that schedule for people shutting down their, uh, their business, you know, for a day uh, to film. Um, and it was much appreciative. Um, however, it's not like we just decided we're going to leave our jobs for a month and just do this carefree thing. Um, it was it was cutthroat of go, 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 you know. All right. Before I ask the last question, uh, a lot of people asked us where they can get tattoos and turnpikes merchandise, which I have hanging up over here. Big Dave approves. And we got the tour shirt here. You guys can get those from cycleteeshop.com. We'll have a link in the description. That's super great quality. They just started shipping out about two weeks ago and they come fully packaged. They look great, they fit great. Campbell's doing a really good job making those. So go visit cycleteeshop.com and you can choose between three tattoos and turnpikes t shirts. And we'll probably have some more coming real soon especially if you guys dig these if you're in the industry at all and you want somebody um camel uh does this work and so just hit him up when you go i believe i believe i'm wearing one of his shirts right now this is a lucky losers shirt and i think he did all the spacey stuff a few people asked us where to get lucky losers merchandise for that you need to message spacey personally because he handles all of that and, uh, you know, he's a, he's an entrepreneur himself. So go to one of his five social media accounts and ask him where to get lucky loser merchandise. <laughs> All right. Our last question, which we probably got 40, 50, 60 asks about this is what happens next? Where does the show go? We can't give people a date of when season two is happening because, we can't film anything right now and we can't take a crew and travel the country right now, but uh, we can start thinking about it and start planning it. So say we leave from Troy, Missouri. Once again, where are we going on season two? I'd like to go Northeast. I'd like to get up to Boston and New York and see that side. I've no, that, that's one, that's one part of the United States I've not been to yet. So I'd like to go out that way. I got a map and I started making a list of everybody that I would like to have on the show, both bike builders and tattoo artists. And I'm just going to put, well, who knows? However, right now I'm going to put a thumb tack in every single location of these and then see what pattern arrives. You know, we did that pattern because that's the way it worked out. You know, that's the way it worked out. And we picked a the best route to hit all those places and those were places that we wanted to hit right now we're just figuring out who rather than the route who i'd like to have on there and then see if there's a route that shows itself denny do you have a do you have a destination you'd like to hit i, I don't necessarily have a a destination that i want to hit um i'm sure whatever they come up with uh it'll be exciting for the show 
I'm sure I'll probably get angry and pissed off a lot of times during it. But with, with that said, you know, this is Dave's brainchild. Um, he, you know, he kind of made this all happen. And to be one of the three people that he picked to go along on this ride and, and you know, to know, to know where we, us three fit in to with him, um, it's, a, it's a special thing all the way around. So as much as I bitch, I'm appreciative, too, that I, that I was thought of to, to go along. You know, I'll go kicking and screaming. Dave, the, the theme of season one was what's the correlation between music, motorcycles, and tattoos? In season two, is there a different thesis you're looking for this time around? Has that been answered for you? There's a lot of similarities, you know, in, in the people and in and, and the thought process. I was talking to my older brother, Bob, on the phone today. He briefly showed up in the background in, in the Texas episode. And what's fascinating today with, um, I mean, we're, we're all looking at it with, uh, with the COVID situation and with the whole world right now is how two people can be, um, have such opposing views on subjects. And um, what I found in that trip was that, that there was a whole lot of like-minded thought process between um, those three industries, you know, and I don't, I, I, <clears throat> you know, you listen to uh, the artists speak and cause I asked that question to all of them, you know, whether it's a sense of freedom or this, the, you're not going to tell me what to do or that rebellious side or the entrepreneur, they're just my people. You know, like when I went to Sturgis, I feel at home. Like these are people, these are my people, you know, they're, they're covered in tattoos. They're um, it's, it appears to me, I'm not saying this is fact that they're, they're open-minded. Um, and other people, they may seem way closed-minded. However, it just seems like the perception of of those industries, um, the music industry and the tattoo industry and the biker industry uh, are misrepresented. So I would really just like to continue um, introducing those people to the world so there's a more accurate representation. Season one, we really focused on what the connection was that was the question that kept coming up is what is the connection between those three entities tattooing uh, motorcycles and, and music in today's society there's so much division you know COVID has got everyone separated it seems like the world is is uh really big you know and when we took off on that we hit this point where you know these connections like you know, um, Spacey had a history with famous Gabe, you know, and then we, we get to Bill Dodge's shop and how Bill Dodge is connected with Jim Root. One thing I realized, um, partly in Sturgis and partly on the filming of season one is just how small everything is, you know, and just like, like everything's connected, man. So I'd like to explore that a little bit more is, is, you know, just, maybe show how we can just piggyback our way across the country like that, you know, and realize that everything's just kind of interconnected. So the connection and the unity that's, that's, that's there. Whereas, you know, most of what is shown through, through the media or through whatever shows division and it's, it, it's really not that way. So I'd kind of like to explore the, the, the unity and, and some of the positivity that's associated with those three areas tattooing music and motorcycles i, I want to add a little bit to that for, for me on those questions um my mind spans a little wider uh i think i think there's more connected especially the tattoos than just music and motorcycles because i i have some other interests in my life and, and and i see music and tattoos and and even motorcycles and and those aspects as well so uh I think it stretches, I think it all stretches a lot further than just those three, um, you know, and there, there's a lot of avenues to explore there too, if, if, uh, if they ever, if they ever surface. I have a road glide that has a radio, however, I never listen to it. I don't even listen to a radio in my vehicle. Um, and I, <clears throat> and I was in my head going, trust came up for me. And I was thinking about a lot the trust that's there when you're riding down the highway 
at 80 miles an hour with somebody close to you on a motorcycle uh, and Jesse's on the back with me, trusting me. And, uh, you know, it came up in tattoos and turnpikes. Like I build relationships with my clients and I think it's built on trust and respect right off the bat. Like the people that come in and ask me to tattoo them, um, they trust me. They've gotten from, for whatever reason, they're trusting me to, to change their body forever. So that relationship starts with trust and respect. And I think that uh, I was in the post office today and a lady says, yeah, don't trust people today. You know, don't trust anybody unless this, because uh, there was some scam going on. And uh, it got my brain thinking, you know, like this weekend I was talking about it, and then I heard her saying it, and it's a big, a big topic you know, in, the, in the tattoo and motorcycle industry for me. There's just a, a trust that's instilled that comes naturally with those two things. You know, if you're going to hop on a motorcycle and ride with somebody, uh, you have to trust them. If you're going to come in and get tattooed by somebody, you have to trust them. And um, I'd like to delve into that a little bit more, see if anybody has that same thought process or if, if that's just in my head. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's all the questions we have. Uh, this is not the end. We are going to have a uh, special episode coming up with uh, some footage from your guys' trip to Sturgis. So everybody, you know, make sure you're going to be on the lookout for that. We will air it on our normal Monday uh, airtime. So make sure you like and subscribe. Click the, there's a little icon down in the bottom corner. If you click that, you subscribe to it. Everybody should be subscribing to it because there's going to be more content over the next couple months. And you're going to want to make sure that you get that. If you're in the tattoo or motorcycle industry and you'd like to sponsor or be a part of Tattoos and Turnpikes, somehow we can create a win-win, let us know. Because we're doing this ourselves. We don't have big people backing us and I want to keep it uh, honest and authentic as I can. So if somehow Tattoos and Turnpikes can benefit you and it can benefit us, let's, uh, let's talk. All right, guys. Thank you, and uh, we'll see everybody later. All right. Good to see you guys. Stay safe. Hey, Stay good. Hey, this is Big Dave. If you want to stay in touch, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for all new content.